can creatine supplementation improve brain function in people with Alzheimer's disease? This is such an important question because we know that over 50 million people around the world have Alzheimer's disease, that brain energy may be one of the key pathways that goes wrong, and creatine may be one way we could target brain energetics and therefore help to improve aspects of cognitive impairment seen in this disease. Today we have some brand new research from a just published clinical study that helps to shed light on this question of whether creatine, and in particular creatine monohydrate, may be a tool that we can start using for Alzheimer's dementia. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Austin Perlmutter. My jam is that I teach about brain health and tools for improving brain function. This isn't medical advice, it's just for education purposes. I put out lots of content on creatine. If you're interested to learn anything more on this topic, whether it's the neuroscience of creatine or how creatine may show value in cognition, in mental health disorders, make sure to check out those videos and that content as well. And if you're interested in anything brain related, be sure to subscribe to my channel. For background on this study and on creatine, there are several recent publications that have shown that creatine may have value for brain health because specifically creatine seems to be capable of boosting brain metabolism and also to some extent having an impact on other systems like immunity. As it relates to Alzheimer's disease, Recognize that this is the most common form of dementia around the world. It makes up around 70% of dementia cases worldwide. And based on the most recent research, it seems that around 40% of Alzheimer's cases may be preventable. However, as we think about mechanisms that seem to be driving Alzheimer's disease, one of the most powerful of these pathways is related to brain metabolism. And in a number of studies of people with Alzheimer's disease, they have shown that Alzheimer's brains seem to have more trouble with getting access to and using glucose. This has even led some researchers to call Alzheimer's dementia type 3 diabetes, and it undergirds the idea that boosting alternative fuel sources to the brain, for example, ketones, may be therapeutic for Alzheimer's disease. So how does this get us back to creatine? Creatine is a molecule naturally made in our bodies. It's also found in our food, especially in animal-based foods. Creatine does this amazing thing where it transfers a phosphate group to help our tissues to regenerate a molecule called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. And ATP is the key energy currency throughout the body and in the brain. In the brain, it's been proposed that the ability to regenerate additional energy to form new ATP may help to buffer low energy states, for example, high levels of cognitive strain. And another example, which was recently studied, is that creatine may actually inhibit some of the negative cognitive effects associated with sleep deprivation. We already know that taking supplemental creatine rapidly and significantly increases levels of creatine in the body, and it also dramatically increases levels of creatine in the brain. But what we haven't known until this study is whether it works in the context of Alzheimer's dementia. So in this study, which was published in Alzheimer's and Dementia, Translational Research and Clinical Interventions, a team of researchers wanted to look at creatine monohydrate in particular. Creatine monohydrate is the best studied form of creatine. It's also usually the cheapest and most available. They wanted to look at creatine monohydrate intervention with people who had Alzheimer's dementia. This was a pilot study. It was published on May 19th of 2025, and they wanted to look at the feasibility and the safety of giving 20 grams of creatine monohydrate a day in two 10-gram doses over an eight-week period in a pretty small sample set. This was 20 patients who they had deemed having a high likelihood of Alzheimer's disease based on clinical and laboratory criteria. They had several exclusion criteria. The most important I would note here is people with severe cognitive impairment were excluded from this study. They also uh, excluded people with diabetes who were on insulin, which I think is interesting because they may actually have been some of the people who benefited most from getting access to alternative forms of fuel for their tissues, given the correlation between diabetes and insulin resistance with the potential for brain insulin resistance correlated here with issues extracting glucose and utilizing glucose. So what did the study actually find? As I mentioned, one of the main things they were looking at was to determine whether in people with Alzheimer's disease, supplementation with creatine monohydrate was capable of increasing brain creatine. 
This is really important because often when we talk about supplements or any intervention around the brain, we don't necessarily get the connection between what happens from a dietary intervention and what actually makes it to the brain. There are multiple stages along the way, but maybe the most notable being that many molecules cannot adequately pass through the blood-brain barrier and get into the brain. In this study, they were able to show using advanced magnetic resonance imaging that 85% of the participants had increases in brain creatine levels, and on average, the creatine levels in the brain went up by 11%. Now that's interesting because it does show that levels of creatine went up in the brain, but it's also interesting because it wasn't in everybody and it wasn't really by a huge amount. The researchers suggested that some of these variable changes could be explained due to alterations in transport across the blood-brain barrier. And I think that's really an important point is that we're starting to learn there may be variability in our various blood-brain barriers in terms of what can get across those barriers. Notably, however, this is the first time a clinical study has shown that supplementing with creatine can increase brain creatine levels, specifically in people with Alzheimer's dementia. When it came to the cognitive effects of creatine supplementation, they found statistically significant changes in terms of improvements in overall cognitive scores, fluid cognition, working memory, and a reading recognition test with a trend towards improvement in an inhibitory control and attention test and no changes in crystallized cognition, picture memory, and other tests. They also didn't see an improvement in the mini mental status test, which is a standard test used in the clinic along with the MOCA test to look for cognitive impairment. And notably, the many mental status tests is actually what they use to screen for people with significant cognitive impairment in that they were making sure that people's tests were actually above a certain threshold. When they compared the cognitive test against brain creatine to see if changes in cognition correlated with brain creatine levels, they only found significance for two tests, oral reading recognition and crystallized cognition. To summarize what I just described, after eight weeks of supplementation with 20 grams of creatine in patients with Alzheimer's disease, they found increases in brain creatine levels and improvements across several cognitive tests with a small signal that some of these changes were related to brain creatine changes. What does all of this mean? First, some caveats. This was a very small study. It was only 20 people, and of the 20, only 19 were compliant enough to be taking that medicine, specifically the creatine, enough of the time for it to count. This wasn't a placebo-controlled trial. This wasn't a blinded trial. Any major conclusions here would need to be further tested with ideally scaled, randomized, placebo-controlled trials. But in the context of the strong mechanistic insight in terms of how creatine may target pathways of metabolism in the brain, specifically in the brains of people with Alzheimer's disease, I think this is a very interesting study. The findings are promising, and they're certainly worth attention and further investigation. If you're interested to learn more about this, you can read the article that I'll post to my website and put the link below. I'll also include the reference to this article at the end of this video. And if you're interested to generally learn more about brain health, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. I look forward to speaking to you again soon.